Welcome back to the range. Got another level four plate from Militech to test today. This is their silicon carbide level four plate. This guy weighs five pounds, six ounces. So about 10 ounces less than the alumina ceramic. Let's throw this guy on the table and see what we're gonna throw against it today. This is a 10 by 12 plate. It does have a foam ring on the entire outside of it. Based on our last test from Militech, it will have a tile array arrangement instead of a solid strike face. This is a made in China plate. Some people may be a little indifferent about that. You may be surprised to find that other manufacturers have imported plates. They don't specifically mention made in the USA and typically you know you would mention that if you were selling something. So that whole leery thing about trusting Chinese plates I would say if you get them from a reputable manufacturer in China, the Militech has shown us NIJ lab testings out of Australia that seem to back up their claims that these are solid level four plates and they've been around for many a years. I mean, it's a global economy these days. If you make a quality product and you pay attention to that quality control, I see no reason not to recommend stuff like this. We have our Procono Digital as always. It's about 80 degrees outside today. We'll be at 45 feet. We have our new clay briefcase. It's a 16 by 16 clay block. We're gonna use some M855A1, some P80 black tip, some M80A1, our NIJ spec 300 wind mag at 2880 feet per second, and some 338 rum with a 250 grain grand slam from Spear. Up first, we'll grab the M2AP NIJ load, then we'll step it right up to the overspec M2AP load. Like the previous Militech plate, we performed the drop test which was two drops on its face from approximately four feet up. I'll do a picture in picture so you can see that. NIJ velocity on the M2AP calls for 2880 plus or minus 50 feet per second. Typically more than you'll ever see out of an M1 Grand with surplus. Velocity 29.36. Let me go reset the plate. Now for our overspec M2AP. Velocity 31.97. Sometimes when the sun comes back out, it's hard to read that. I think it's 97. My friend's supposed to send me the uh, cable so I can just hook that up to a laptop or something and do that. Here was our two shots so far. What do you guys think? That last velocity, in case the camera died, the battery ran low on me, it was 31.97. No pass through, not bad. Quite a bit of dimple difference there with that velocity increase. You can tell that that back face is getting there. Approximately 36 millimeters on the NIJ spec. This one may be a little harder. 41 on the increased velocity. Now we'll hit it with two 556 five, threats. We have some M855A1 and some 57SS190 pole. It's kind of similar to your M855 ball, it has a steel tip, but this has an aluminum core and only weighs 30 grains. I had them with me to see. I doubt they're going to go through, but they're going to be like 3,600 feet per second. Just want to test them. Do the M855A1 first. Thirty-two fifty-nine. 
3887, I think. 3887. Wow. And now our 308 threats. We have the P80 black tip, has a steel core, and our M80A1, which is a 130 grain with an exposed steel penetrator tip. Rockwell hardness on that is right around 52 on the C scale. The P80 was over 59 from what I recall. Do the P80 first. 2812, kind of low on that shot. We want to be that low. We want to be that low for that last shot. I'm going to go right in. Oh 2904. Here was our A1 shot. Here was our SS190. This was the P80 black tip way down there for some reason. And then this is the M80A1, really close to that one. That might affect our results. All right. No pass through. All right. Here was the P80. Now, I don't know if that's the M80A1 or not. I think it is. Punched a hole and then some <laughs> in my clay. Back face down there, not too bad. The M855A1, not that bad as well. I'm not sure. Is that the SS190? We can take a second shot. That one just seems like that was the M80. Maybe I can look back at the footage real quick and see. We have a couple spots left in the plate. Let's try again. Unfortunately, with the SIC plate, I'll show you guys in a minute, there's not much strike face left. Seems like some of these hits took a toll on that whole ceramic tile array. I've marked a couple tiles out. We're going to try to see if that one that penetrated was the SS190 or the M80A1. So we'll see what we get. This plate may be so far compromised that it's not going to matter. Velocity 3921. 3864. Looks like that hole probably was from the M80A1. We'll definitely have to go back and look at the footage and we'll try to make sure we look at the hits on that. Unfortunately this plate will not survive to the 338 test. Most of the ceramic strike face as you can see is toast. There was one up here that we hit with the SS 190 and then over here again and there's just not anything left of these tiles to take that kind of hit. Probably better off with the alumina oxide plate than this one. Oops, I broke it. Now this is the second SIC plate that I've tested on the channel. The first being the RMA ultra lightweight, was it 1199 plate? It was like 4.4 pounds. That didn't seem to take the beating that even the 1155 plate did. Kind of this all the same here. Just can't take some of those extreme threats in a multitude. It certainly did stop the one M2 AP round, and then the second one at you know 200 feet per second faster than what the NIJ calls for, so I'm very impressed there. The M80A1, I probably wouldn't call that a fair hit because it was close to the epicenter of the SS190 that we shot at it. I'd like to thank Militech for providing us with armor to test out, give you guys a little more information about it. I definitely think they build a quality product. Like I said in my previous video, if you're going to buy Chinese armor, do your research, make sure that they can provide you with NIJ 
lab reports, which these guys did. They've been in business a while. I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters for watching, as well as you all. Until next time, catch you at the range.